With over three decades in Hollywood to his name, Kevin Costner has achieved legendary status. But as it goes for any sought-after leading man in Hollywood, settling down can be challenging. Costner has had many great loves in life, from a seemingly happy first marriage to hordes of models and fellow Hollywood starlets, the Dancing with Wolves actor decided it was time for a change when he met a certain someone. And after years of dating, affairs, and divorce, Kevin Costner finds love again. It wasn't always easy, but he got there. Here's Kevin Costner's journey to true love and happiness, living the single life. Kevin Costner embraced the solo lifestyle throughout much of the 90s. During this period, he reveled in the dating scene, moving from one relationship to another with very little time in between. His romantic escapades earned him a reputation as an A-list womanizer, and skeptics believed he'd remain steadfast in his bachelor ways. Amidst Hollywood rumors, Kevin's wild and unpredictable lifestyle became fodder for tabloids and gossip columns. Despite his openness in admitting wrongdoings, he tried to maintain some semblance of privacy in a world where the personal lives of celebrities are often subject to public scrutiny. There was a time when Kevin embraced monogamy, marrying his college sweetheart. However, his burgeoning fame and fortune introduced a wave of temptation that proved challenging to resist. First Love Kevin Costner's first love story unfolded with Cindy Silva, an enchanting woman with a raven-haired beauty. Cindy, who portrayed Snow White at Disneyland and was a Homecoming Queen nominee at California State University Fullerton, CSUF, crossed paths with Kevin during their time at CSUF. Their love blossomed amid the academic corridors leading to a union in 1978. Reflecting on their relationship in a 1989 interview, Costner expressed admiration, stating, She was beautiful. She was sweet. She was smarter than me. He further emphasized, She represented everything about women that I like. The couple's joy extended to the arrival of three children, Annie, Lily, and Joe. However, Despite the initial happiness, the marriage took an unfortunate turn, and the initial bliss gave way to challenges and complexities. Costner wanted to go his own way. While on the surface, Kevin and Cindy Costner projected an image of an ideal marriage, complete with shared ventures like owning a racehorse named Proud Tobe Together, there were subtle signs that not all was as idyllic as it seemed. Interviews conducted at various points in their relationship hinted at a more complex reality. In 1987, Kevin made a statement that resonated with a desire for something beyond the confines of conventional living. He candidly expressed, I have a big thirst, a big taste for things. I hate the fact that I've lived by somebody else's rules and I've somehow missed out on something. This candid revelation didn't escape the notice of those in the industry and close friends who saw through the carefully crafted facade. For fans who had embraced the narrative of a caring, loving, and honest man in Kevin, such revelations brought a sense of disappointment. The contradiction to the straight-shooter image they had come to love left them grappling with the complexity of the Costner's relationship which, despite outward appearances, bore the hallmarks of a more intricate and challenging reality. Ending the marriage. The duo put immense effort into creating Costner's acclaimed film, Dances with Wolves, a blockbuster that clinched six Oscars. While he immersed himself in the film's set, she juggled stage-managing duties and lifted spirits during the extended shoot in South Dakota by organizing lively film crew parties. Alongside these commitments, she already had a full-time job caring for their children. Despite their collaborative efforts, rumors of Costner's infidelity began circulating in the tabloids. They exerted considerable effort to salvage their marriage, grappling with the challenges posed by the affairs. Unfortunately, the strain became too much for Cindy, and Costner displayed no inclination to curtail his romantic entanglements. Ultimately, they decided to part ways. In a joint divorce statement, they conveyed, 
After 16 years together, we are ending our marriage. We have amicably resolved all issues regarding our children and financial affairs, and a full marital settlement has been reached. The divorce was officially finalized in 1994. The writing was on the wall. In the period just preceding the official announcement of their divorce, Kevin Costner offered a glimpse into the challenges looming on the horizon. In an interview with the Daily News, he candidly shared his thoughts on the formidable temptations that accompany fame and success. He acknowledged, The temptations are pretty strong, and there's a hungry world out there waiting for you to fall, so you can't even dabble without paying a huge price. I try to conduct my life with a certain amount of dignity and discretion, but marriage is a hard, hard gig. While Costner recognized the inherent difficulties of maintaining a marriage, he was candid about the intricate dance with temptation that fame brought into his life. His acknowledgement of the challenges implied a struggle to balance personal desires with the commitment to marriage. Indeed, marriage is universally acknowledged as hard work, but the added complexities arising from navigating the fallout of extramarital affairs added a layer of strain. Some observers suggested that Costner had a reputation for being inclined to pursue relationships with women he found attractive. In his own words, he emphasized, the package isn't important, as he shared his genuine appreciation for women with People magazine in 1989. This admission hinted at a complex relationship with temptation, personal desires, and the ever-watchful eye of the public. Bridget Rooney In the aftermath of Kevin Costner's divorce, a chapter of secrecy and scandal unfolded, revealing a clandestine affair with Bridget Rooney. Bridget hailed from the prominent Rooney family, renowned for owning and operating the Pittsburgh Steelers' NFL franchise. Despite the desire to keep this liaison under wraps, the relationship couldn't escape the spotlight, eventually surfacing as a tabloid sensation. This covert connection took root in 1995 and, unfortunately, met its end the following year. Bridget, not just known for her connection to the Rooney legacy, but also for her appearance in the 2011 movie Zombie or Not Zombie, found herself entangled in the whirlwind of Hollywood gossip alongside Kevin Costner. The full revelation of Kevin and Bridget's affair occurred in 1996 when Bridget gave birth to a son, Liam Costner. This addition marked the actor's fourth child, though the unfolding of the relationship with Liam wasn't without its challenges. Initially, their connection was strained, and Kevin only formally acknowledged Liam as his son after Bridget insisted on a paternity test. The results confirming Liam's paternity prompted Kevin to establish a trust fund for his son, with their interactions limited to occasional meetings. More than one affair. After liberating himself from his 16-year marriage and embracing bachelorhood, Costner ventured into new experiences, so to speak. However, even before the divorce, he had already sown a few wild oats. In an unconfirmed report, there are whispers of Costner engaging in an extramarital affair with Halle Berry in 1989, amidst the challenging period of his marriage to Cindy Silva. At that time, Halle Berry was in the early stages of establishing herself as an actress. The alleged steamy affair coincided with Hall's stint in 12 episodes of Living Dolls, while Costner, caught in the midst of Field of Dreams, reveled in the fame brought by Dances with Wolves. Although neither actor has publicly acknowledged their time together, they maintain a friendship and have been seen hanging out together on several occasions. Michelle Pfeiffer in the aftermath of his divorce, Kevin Costner seemed to court the tabloid headlines by entering into a romantic escapade with none other than Michelle Pfeiffer, the acclaimed actress known for her roles in iconic films such as Scarface, Dangerous Liaisons, and Batman Returns. It's worth noting that Bridget Rooney, with whom Costner had a previous affair, also had a stint as a character in the Batman universe, portraying the feline character in a different production.
Costner's apparent inclination toward women associated with the portrayal of Catwoman in various films adds an intriguing layer to his romantic endeavors. Notably, he even expressed interest in playing Pfeiffer's love interest in the Italian love story Taming Ben Taylor. Despite his enthusiasm, this particular film faced challenges and never made it out of the production stage. Nevertheless, the mere prospect of Costner being linked romantically with Pfeiffer generated a flurry of tabloid sparks, further fueling the public's curiosity about his post-divorce love life. Bobby Jean Brown Bobby Jean Brown, renowned not just for her relationship with Tommy Lee, but also for her appearance in a memorable music video, made waves in Warrant's Cherry Pie. This popular 80s hair metal anthem reached its climax, with Brown being doused by a fire hose. Following her split from Tommy Lee, who went on to marry Pamela Anderson, Brown delved into a series of dates, vividly chronicled in her revealing memoir, Dirty Rocker Boys, Love and Lust on the Sunset Strip. As you might anticipate, Kevin Costner was among the rocker boys who caught her attention. In an amusing twist, a romantic moment at Costner's lavish home took an unexpected turn when she accidentally set fire to his bedroom. Quite literally. Mighty Aphrodite, Lurus Costner into an affair. Woody Allen's 1995 romantic comedy, Mighty Aphrodite, played a significant role in Kevin Costner's romantic escapades. Mira Sorvino's stellar performance as the carefree prostitute Linda Ash caught Costner's attention. Known for his ability to spot rising Hollywood talent, Costner embarked on a courtship with Sorvino as she ascended the ranks of fame. At the time of their affair, Sorvino was in the midst of filming the movie, with only a handful of other titles under her belt. The sparks between them ignited in 1993, a year prior to Costner's divorce. Unsurprisingly, the tabloids eagerly seized on this Hollywood romance, employing radar-like precision to track Costner's latest love interests during the tumultuous 1990s, dating a supermodel. Following his divorce in 1994, Kevin Costner embraced the single life with gusto, eager to make up for what he felt he had missed during his married years. Despite his newfound freedom, the pursuit of true love remained a central theme in Costner's life. Amidst the tabloid buzz of his post-divorce escapades, rumors surfaced about a potential affair with supermodel Naomi Campbell in the mid-1990s. Campbell, who had entered the modeling scene at a young age and quickly became a household name, carried with her a dating history that attracted considerable attention. She had been engaged to U2 bassist Adam Clayton and had a tumultuous relationship with Formula One racer Flavio Briatore. The intensity of her experience with Briatore reached a point where she sought solace in a four-week anger therapy program. Another fling with an actress. In the realm of Kevin Costner's romantic entanglements, another chapter unfolds with rumors of a brief fling with actress Karen Resnick. Karen, recognized for her roles in notable films like Clara's Heart and Her Alibi, entered the spotlight with her acting prowess. The alleged relationship with the Yellowstone star became a subject of speculation, contributing to the tapestry of Kevin's womanizing reputation. The late 90s saw Karen Resnick's path taking a different turn as she exchanged vows with film director John Byram. While the nature of Kevin and Karen's connection remains unconfirmed, given Costner's history as a womanizer, many couldn't help but entertain the possibility that their paths crossed in a romantic context. Costner's ex-girlfriend comes to his rescue. Bridget Cunningham, a multifaceted individual with a degree from Rutgers, made a name for herself as an event organizer, Green Party activist, and child's rights advocate. Her life took a turn as she faced paternity challenges with Harry Nuttall, a race driver known for being a deadbeat dad. Her previous marriage, albeit short-lived at three months, set the stage for a series of personal ups and downs. In the late 1990s, 
Cunningham found herself in the public eye due to her three-year relationship with Kevin Costner. Their connection, while ending in Cunningham's recovery from alcoholism, showcased her loyalty to Costner during both highs and lows. As a Rutgers graduate and an advocate for children's rights, Cunningham's resilience in the face of personal challenges echoed her commitment to making a positive impact. The year 2006 marked a pivotal moment for Costner, embroiled in a lewd behavior scandal following a massage incident at a prestigious hotel in 2004. Cunningham stepped up to defend Costner, portraying him as a romantic and tender individual. In her statement, she exclaimed, Kevin is very romantic and tender. He would never do anything so vulgar. He really is Mr. Perfect, squeaky clean, if a little naive when it comes to realizing the effect he has on girls. Angie Everhart Angie Everhart, a prominent actress and model, secured her place as the 98th most sexy woman in FHM's 100 Sexiest Women of 2003 issue. Her striking looks and captivating presence catapulted her into Hollywood, making her debut alongside Arnold Schwarzenegger in Last Action Hero. As a Sports Illustrated swimsuit model, Everhart graced the pages of the iconic magazine and garnered attention for her engagement to both Sylvester Stallone and Joe Pesci. Rumors swirled about Everhart's romantic entanglement with Kevin Costner and their 1995 dinner date fueled tabloid speculations. This occurred amid whispers of Costner's potential reconciliation with his wife, Cindy, adding an extra layer of intrigue to the Hollywood gossip mill. Despite the buzz, Costner's romance with Everhart proved to be short-lived as she later tied the knot with comedian and singer-songwriter Ashley Hamilton. He also dated Friends star Courtney Cox. The duo first embarked on a romantic journey in 1995 during Costner's swinging singles era, but details of this discreet relationship remain largely shrouded in mystery. Fate, however, had another reunion in store for them six years later. The year 2001 marked a cinematic reunion for Costner and Cox as they shared the big screen in the action-adventure crime movie 3,000 Miles to Graceland. This reunion occurred amidst significant changes in Courtney Cox's personal life. By then, she had decisively moved on from her past romantic entanglements, the leading lady of Friends had entered into matrimony with David Arquette in 1999, a few years before her on-screen collaboration with Costner in 3,000 Miles to Graceland, another love affair in 1995. Remember Cheryl Teagues? The American supermodel, credited with shaping the idea of supermodels, achieved monumental success in her modeling career, which also led to the creation of her own line of signature sportswear. Along her journey, she graced the covers of renowned publications like the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Issue and Time Magazine. Unsurprisingly, Costner was captivated by her allure. During the balmy August nights of 1995, he set the stage for romantic encounters with this fashion icon, who, like many, found the Field of Dreams star undeniably striking. Notably, when it came to dating models, Costner's preference leaned toward the superstars, including his wife. A fight with Cal Ripken Jr. Ah, the intrigues of the game, both on and off the field. In the annals of baseball history, the year 1997 marked a significant moment in Cal Ripken Jr.'s illustrious career. Ripken, known for his unprecedented consecutive game-playing streak, faced an unexpected hiccup that raised eyebrows and sparked rumors across Baltimore and beyond. As the story goes, Ripken experienced a purported breakdown that prevented him from taking his usual spot on the field that fateful night. To safeguard his impressive record of consecutive games played, an interesting twist unfolded. A Baltimore Orioles employee orchestrated a lighting malfunction, or so the narrative goes. Whether intentional or coincidental, the outcome was the same. The game was called, adding a curious chapter to Ripken's otherwise unbroken streak. In a twist that would make any soap opera jealous, the rumor mill churned out another juicy tidbit involving none other than Kevin Costner, 
a personal friend of Ripken's. According to the grapevine, Ripken, in a rush to retrieve something forgotten, returned to his home, only to stumble upon a scene that could rival any Hollywood drama, Costner allegedly in bed with Ripken's wife, Kelly. The fallout from this alleged encounter was not just limited to whispers. Some versions of the tale suggest that Ripken, understandably upset, administered a beating to Costner, rendering the Hollywood star temporarily indisposed and unable to engage in publicity, a rather inconvenient timing, considering Costner was in the final stages of wrapping up The Postman. Good Morning America Host Joan London falls for Costner. The year 1995 seemed to be a whirlwind of romantic encounters for Kevin Costner, and one notable name on his dating roster was Joan London. Known for her prominent role in co-hosting ABC's Good Morning America from 1980 to 1997, London brought her own brand of charm and charisma to the public eye. Their connection, however, was not destined for the long haul, primarily due to the intense scrutiny from the media. As Kevin navigated the promotional landscape for his new movie, Waterworld, the press became fixated not just on the film, but unsurprisingly on the details of the actor's love life. Amidst the media frenzy, Joan London reminisced about a beautiful and romantic first date aboard a yacht, suggesting that the relationship held promise. However, the relentless attention from the press proved to be a formidable obstacle, overshadowing the budding connection between Costner and London. Single life gets serious with a live-in girlfriend. As the calendar flipped to a new year, Costner embraced a change in lifestyle. The year 1996 marked the beginning of his romance with Australian model Elle McPherson. Enchanted by the captivating celebrity who seamlessly juggled roles as a model, actress, businesswoman, and TV host, their relationship swiftly transitioned into a serious phase. Costner couldn't help but express his admiration, stating, I feel I have met my equal with this beautiful, talented, funny, and lovely person. In a matter of months, the couple took the plunge and moved in together, exchanging the single lifestyle for a taste of domestic stability. However, despite the initial enthusiasm, this chapter in Costner's love life proved to be short-lived, coming to an end by the close of the same year. A European fling interrupts a serious relationship. Italian-French supermodel and pop singer Carla Bruni, later renowned as France's first lady during her relationship with French President Nicolas Sarkozy, found herself the object of Kevin Costner's affections. While their romance was relatively short-lived, Bruni, being one of the world's first supermodels, had previously ended relationships with iconic figures like Mick Jagger and Eric Clapton, placing Costner in esteemed company. Just when it appeared that Costner might be ready to take another walk down the aisle with the beautiful Elle McPherson, he found himself entangled in another affair, subsequently reverting to the life of a bachelor once more. 1997 was a good year for Costner. Two acclaimed films catapulted Costner into the coveted echelons of actor accolades. His stellar performance in Tin Cup, 1996, earned him a Golden Globe Award nomination, and he secured another nomination for a Saturn Award for his 1997 film, The Postman. As if things couldn't get any better that year, he crossed paths with news anchor Tawny Little. Engaging in a secret romance with the former Miss America pageant winner, Costner joined the list of celebrities who had the pleasure of dating Little, following in the footsteps of Ron Silver and Burt Reynolds, a steamy 1999 rumor enrages John Travolta. In 1999, during the filming of For the Love of the Game, Costner found himself entangled in a different kind of drama, not with a fellow baseball player, but with a fellow actor. Rumors circulating about Kevin Costner allegedly getting too close to his co-star Kelly Preston, who was married to John Travolta, sparked a brief tabloid frenzy. The gossip press suggested that the on-screen romance might have spilled into off-screen intimacy. A story in the National Enquirer even claimed that Travolta was furious. 
Despite the media speculation, neither Costner nor Preston publicly addressed the allegations, and the Travolta-Preston marriage remained intact. Little did Costner know he was about to encounter the one, the one, Kevin Costner's pursuit of the ideal partner following his divorce from Cindy led him on a meandering journey that intersected directly with Christine Baumgartner's. Another stunning model adorned his arm as the fashion handbag designer and notably younger beauty found herself captivated by the double Oscar winning actor of Dances with Wolves. Remarkably, Baumgartner's connection to California State University Fullerton his alma mater as well, added a coincidental twist to their story. Their paths first crossed while he was honing his golf skills for the film Tin Cup in the late 1980s, a time when he was still married. However, in 1998, their lives intersected again, and this time, both were unattached. After obtaining her phone number, Costner surprised himself by declaring he would call in two weeks. Reflecting on that moment, the actor admitted, When I met Christine, I wasn't prepared to be in love again. It took me a long time before I said, I love you to her. A long time. In short, despite the two-decade age difference, they embarked on a journey of romance. Costner's transition out of bachelorhood. His bachelor life was a whirlwind of excitement and unpredictability, a fact he openly acknowledged, confessing, when I wanted some company in my life, I was like the classic single guy. Who do I love this week? Who next week? I wouldn't even use the word love with someone because that makes things trickier. Throughout this period, the tabloids eagerly documented his romantic escapades. However, when Christine Baumgartner re-entered his life, a transformative shift began. Initially, their relationship flourished, starting in 1998 when she was 33 and he was 53. Despite the positive start, they encountered challenges by 2002, leading to a separation. The divergence stemmed from Baumgartner's desire to start a family, a prospect Costner was hesitant about. Despite her willingness to wait, she made it clear it wouldn't be an indefinite timeline. Cold feet. Costner initially hesitated when it came to family and commitment, but fortunately, he managed to overcome his reservations in time to salvage their relationship. His period of being single again served as a valuable lesson, providing him with the time and clarity to recognize his fears. Reflecting on his past, Costner admitted that fear had kept him from marrying Christine. He acknowledged that she desired a child, but he was apprehensive about his ability to be an effective father. After dating for four years, the realization hit him. He wondered if he was going to lose a beautiful woman who was willing to be with him to his very last breath because he was afraid to say yes to a child. That was all it took, reunited. The couple got engaged in 2003 and exchanged their vows at Costner's expansive 165-acre Colorado estate, located just outside of Aspen, on September 25, 2004. The picturesque ranch, set up like a film set, served as the meeting place for the lovebirds. Costner arrived in a covered wagon, while she made her entrance in a vintage, restored green pickup truck. Their vows were spoken next to a meandering stream, with guests including Tim Allen, Mary McDonnell, and Don Johnson, gathered under event tents to offer their congratulations. Surrounded by 300 of their closest friends and family members, they joyously celebrated. It marked Christine's first time saying I do, and Costner's second and final time, unless, of course, the Field of Dreams star were to venture back into single life. However, this time, he pledged to be faithful. According to their friend David Giamarco, it was evident that Kevin and Christine were like kids together, truly in love. Becoming a family man again. The couple enjoyed a three-year honeymoon period before deciding to expand their family. In May 2007, their first son, Caden, was born. Costner took a hiatus from acting to actively participate in parenting and domestic responsibilities. 
his professional focus shifted from time-consuming film projects to less demanding endeavors, such as investing in a centrifuge machine. Additionally, he devoted time to touring with his country rock band Modern West, signaling a departure from the spotlight. His days of attracting tabloid attention were firmly behind him, with his newfound role as a father taking center stage once again. A father of seven kids. In 2009, the Costner family welcomed their second child, Hayes, who was two years younger than their first son, Caden. The family continued to grow with the arrival of their daughter, Grace, in 2010. The couple found joy in their expanding family. Reflecting on his family in 2011, Costner expressed, They're really good children, and I see them making steps every day, and the one thing I pray for in life is not success, but being able to raise my children and that nothing happens to me in the next 20 years. With his first three children from his marriage with Cindy now grown, and including his son Liam with Bridget Rooney, Costner was now the proud father of seven children. Love and family. The man who navigated a tumultuous marriage and a bumpy midlife experience shared, I have never wanted to be afraid in my life, but after my divorce, I was. The pain of that experience had been so strong that I never wanted to go through it ever again. However, the challenging experience imparted a valuable lesson. Sometimes you learn the thing you're most afraid of will save your life, Costner reflected. With almost two decades together, three wonderful children, and his drop-dead gorgeous wife by his side, things are good. She undoubtedly saved his life, and he takes pride in being a loving and committed man.